Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a privilege. As we enter into your presence, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. There's none like you in all heaven or earth. And we stand at attention this morning. We give your name adoration. We come towards Hallelujah. you to Hallelujah. give you a sacrifice of praise. An offering of thanksgiving. Jesus. We, oh Father, surrender ourselves. Oh, allow this prayer to be as an incense before your nostrils. I pray this morning for a visitation of your spirit. Speak to our hearts, oh Lord. Give us encouragement. Give us hope. Give us insight. Help us to see and understand and know your plan. I thank you, Lord Jesus, even now for the manifestation of your glory. Yes. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for the utterance, O oh God. I thank you for the speaking, O oh Lord, and the articulation of the Holy Spirit. And we praise you, we magnify you, we glorify you. Oh, stare us, change us, deliver us, revive us, save us. Oh, and we'll give thy name praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. 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 Come on, everybody, put your hands together. Amen. It's a pleasure to be in the presence of the Lord. Because if I can get into God's presence, it changes everything. Nothing remains the same. If I can just get into God's presence. Yes. I'll find refreshing, I'll find deliverance, I'll find an oasis if I can just get into the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. As the psalmist said, that in his presence, there is the fullness of joy. So if you are empty, if you can just get into his presence, you can experience fullness. And Today, we want to continue talking in our series regarding discussion of the seed. Mm -hmm. Today's message will address building the house. All right. Now, last week when we talked about the seed, we understand that in Genesis, between the 12th and the 15th verse, Abraham had an issue with God. God had already promised him, I'm going to make your name great. Mm -hmm. But here at this point, he hadn't seen anything from God. And I know in our personal lives, God has spoken to us. He's revealed some of the things that he's desired and that he's planned for us. And we're looking and we're searching and we're trying to find where is God? And Abraham asked God, you're telling me all this, but I don't even have anybody. Where's my hair? To bring forth the promise. My God, my God. And sometimes we're looking for a solution. Mm. But we need to wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen our heart. Abraham, he first thought it was going to be Lot. But Lot did not play the part. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> then he thought maybe it's going to be Eleazar, his uh, servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Eleazar was not adequate to complete the vision of the plan that God gave. Uh -huh. But then he had Hagar and he thought Ishmael was going to be God. the promise. And every time in our life, sometimes we're looking for a solution. Oh, Jesus. We're looking for a way to bring what God has said to pass. Mm. But you got to understand, when God speaks a word, mm. when God gives you a promise, Say that. when God makes a covenant, he is bound by that covenant. Yes, sir. Because after 
He told Abraham, stop worrying. He told Abraham, I want you to go get some, some a turtle dove. I want you to go get a goat. I want you to go get a pigeon. I want you to go get something for a sacrifice. Uh -huh. and, and so he had Abraham to get the animals for the sacrifice. Yes. And so Abraham, he was prepared to, to go forth because the sacrifice is what was going to bring covenant. Mm -hmm. And as Abraham took the animals, the Bible says that he divided the animals in half. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that the animals were put on the left side and on the right side. And according to, to, to the tradition of the time, the animals would have been set under what is called a basin or wadi. Say that. And the blood would flow down yes, between yes. the two carcasses. Uh -huh. And Abraham, what he thought is that in his own power and strength, Mama. that he was going to seal the covenant. Uh -huh. But God said, no, Abraham. He put a deep sleep on Abraham uh -huh. so he could not participate in the covenant. My God. And God Beginning at the 12th verse. 2 Samuel, the 7th chapter, beginning at the 12th verse. The word of the Lord declares the following <clears throat> When your days are over, and you rest with your fathers, I will raise up, now the NIV says offspring, but the King James Version says seed, mm -hmm. to succeed you, who will come from your own body, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I'll be his father, he will be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with the rod of men, with floggings inflicted by men. This is God's word for his people. When we look at 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter, here we see the continuance of the promise of the seed. Now remember from our first lesson in Genesis 3 and 15, we discussed the seed of the serpent. We understand that the serpent, originally he was flying, mm -hmm. 
But after the flying serpent was denounced, he became a walking serpent. Mm -hmm. But then he went from becoming a walking serpent to a crawling serpent. My God. And now we understand that the enemy is under our feet. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet. And feet are symbolic of your discipleship, your commitment, your worship. And so Satan is under my feet. He has no business walking or flying around anymore in our lives. But we also discuss the seed of the woman. And we specifically talked about that in relation to the fulfillment of that being Christ. Mm -hmm. And we discuss that seed, which is Zara, strong concordance number 2233. It is a singular term, but it is the one that contains the many. In our text today, God is speaking to David. God is continuing to talk about the seed or the offspring and the bringing forth of a covenant. Mm -hmm. And what we see in this text is if you look at the NIV, it says offspring. But if you look at the King James Version, it says seed. seed. I want you to understand that there is a difference mm -hmm. between seed and offspring. They're not the same thing. All right. That if we look at seed, seed is zera. But if we look at offspring, offspring is say it so. And it means the many from the one. <laughs> so while Zara talks about the one that contains the many, offspring talks about the many from the one. The best example or comparison I can give you is that in a family, you have one father that produces many children. But also, you may have many children that are born by one mother. Mm -hmm. And so, you got to understand that there is a difference between the seed and the offspring. Mm -hmm. For it is from the seed that the offspring are created. And when we understand, as it says in Galatians, the third chapter, that Christ is the seed. Yes. Christ is the seed that was spoken of and is the fulfillment of the covenant and of the promise that God gave in Genesis, the third chapter. And I want to understand I want you to understand something, that each and every one of us, that we have an opportunity to be a seed. There are many environments that we are engaged in. There are many activities, there are many people and many com connections in many yes, places. Yes, yes. There's many things that we are planning in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I want you to understand that you have an opportunity mm -hmm. to produce something as a seed. The question that you have to ask yourself is what are you going to produce? What are you going to build? What is your life going to manifest? And so as a seed grows, germinates, 
unfolds, reveals. What is your life going to produce, unfold, and fulfill? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're planted in your environment in the earth. My God. But what are you going to produce? What is going to be your fruit? Because you already have the root. Yeah. What are you going to bring forth for God? When Jesus was talking to the disciples, we understand that Jesus was the fulfillment of the promise. Yes, he was. That, that promise that was spoken of in the Torah. 